The last thing is the Groucho thing, and you're running out of your time here, I see. You've got about right. five minutes. <laughs> started in an interesting way. Ever the way. producer. Ever yeah. the producer. Well, there was a Walgreen two-hour radio show on once a year to, for a penny sale, and they got a lot of people who were stars. Radio Spectacular, I guess you'd mm -hmm. call it. And Linkletter was called to do a People Are Funny stunt, and I was the producer, and so I was there, and I held the needle, which was to hand to Linkletter, which was to hand to Cesar Romero, who was blindfolded, who was supposed to put a patch on the seat of a contestant's pants. It was a very high-class stunt. <laughs> but I was sitting there in the audience watching Bob Hope and Groucho Marx reading a script, mm -hmm. funny stuff, and Bob dropped his script by accident. So Groucho dropped his script on purpose, and they were much, much funnier with their scripts dropped than they were reading the mm -hmm. stuff. And afterwards, I went up to Groucho, whom I didn't know, and said, you know, hiring you to read a script is like buying a Cadillac for the purpose of hauling coal. You don't utilize mm -hmm. your abilities. And he'd flopped four times on the radio. I said, you want to do a quiz show? He says, you mean compete with refrigerators? And I said, yeah. He says, well, I've flopped four times so far, what can I lose? And that's how we went mm -hmm. in business together to do this particular show, which was a rebirth for him because he was oh, 57 yeah. years uh -huh. old then. You Bet Your Life, conceived by the Just Heard John Goodell and hosted by comedian Groucho Marx, debuted over ABC's Airwaves on October 27, 1947. We made that show for $250 and the radio record, and I took it to all the networks, they all turned it down, because they said Groucho's flopped four times on the radio. So then, I read in the paper, here's the reading the variety again, <laughs> that Alan Gelman, president of Elgin American Compact Company of Chicago, is coming to the Beverly Hills Hotel to sign up Phil Baker for his <laughs> new quiz show, Everybody Wins is going to, see? So I called up Mr. Gelman at the Beverly Hills. I said, have you signed up Phil Baker yet? He says, no. I said, I want you to hear a record. So I took the record up to his room and played it. And he didn't know Groucho had flopped four times on the radio. He says, this is a funny record. I remember him in the coconuts. There's a pretty funny man, you know. <laughs> OK, and we made the deal. And Phil Baker fired his press agent. <laughs> anyway, that's how the thing got on. Three couples were brought on stage to be interviewed and quizzed by Groucho. Each couple was given $20 and told to bet as much as they dared risk on four questions from a category of their choosing. The money would double with each successive step. Couples could win $320, go broke on the first question, or finish anywhere in between. The couple with the largest money total got a chance at the jackpot question, worth at least $1,000. There was also a secret word each week, with bonus money to be divided if someone said the word while the show was on the air. Although 1947 was radio's highest rated season, the quiz show aired against NBC's Mr. District Attorney on Wednesdays at 9.30. At season's end, You Bet Your Life only pulled a rating of 13. Groucho felt uncomfortable trying to be funny on a live radio show. Goodell's answer was to record the show, which allowed Groucho to relax. The program could then be edited for time later. The idea worked. The show moved to CBS in 1949. You Bet Your Life became Network Radio's top-rated quiz show, finishing the season in 11th place overall. The Groucho thing was on radio first for a couple of years before it went Three years. TV. Three years on radio and then um, 11 on television. Yeah. Did it go into television with Elgin American or right away with... Oh, no. Elgin American was only on... They'd go on for 26 weeks and then try to get out for the... See, they only had Christmas selling. Oh, I see. And f we just fussed along with them. And they were nice people because mm -hmm. they started us. But it was DeSoto, Plymouth, Chrysler yeah. Plymouth, that really took over there. Yeah. And they kept it for a long while, and we ran DeSoto out of business, made it an extinct car by having so many people. Actually, it wasn't the right product. Here we had a very large mass audience, a number one, number two show in radio and television, and a $6,000 item. Mm -hmm. So we figured Tony and Lever Brothers and those people, those are the ones that could use it, and those are the ones that finally got it. Uh -huh. The contract with DeSoto Plymouth of Chrysler was worth $4 million over 10 years. 
It also moved the show to NBC Radio and TV, beginning October 4, 1950. The program remained a top 15 hit until 1957. That October 23rd, it was airing on radio Wednesday evenings at 9 p.m. This episode's secret word was money. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word is money. M-O-N-E-Y. Really? You bet your life. It's Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood and brought to you by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America who invite you to see and drive the most exciting car in the world today, DeSoto for 1957. The most exciting car today is now delighting the far highway. It's the lovely, it's dynamic, it's DeSoto. Exciting style to please the eye, exciting power to pass them by. It's the lovely, it's dynamic, it's DeSoto. Here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. We also have a secret word, and if any of our couples say it, they'll win an extra $100. Okay, George, who's first? Groucho, we have a married couple waiting to talk to you. They're Mr. and Mrs. Robert McLeod. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet... Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and take home an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. And Mrs. Mr. Mrs. Robert McLeod. Huh? You're a fine, uh, happy-looking uh, married couple. Mrs. McLeod, what is your first name? Uni. Uni? Uni? Uni. E-U-N-I. What sort of a name is that? Well, I don't really know, Groucho. I think it comes from Eunice, and that's Greek. It means good victory. No. Oh. Well, good victory to you tonight, too. <laughs> Thank you. Where are you from, Uni? I'm from Massachusetts. Massachusetts, huh? Never heard of it. Huh? <laughs> and where are you from, uh, Bob? I'm from Texas, but I spent most of my time in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh. Well, what did you do in Phoenix? I joined the U.S. 25th Infantry, served in there, and I fought in the rain. Why did you fight in the rain? I don't understand this. Well, I tried to make some money, Groucho. <laughs> Well, you make some money. <laughs> you made some money. You made yourself a hundred dollars for you and, uh, and your wife, yeah? Thank you. Now, l let me get this straight. You say you joined the infantry? Well, I fought as a civilian, then I fought while I was in service. You were fighting all the time, huh? <laughs> but I don't, uh, were you a professional fighter? Professional fighter. Oh, you were a prize fighter, huh? All right. Oh. How many fights did you have? 25 more, about you, to be exact. You must have been pretty good. There's not a mark on you. How many fights did you win? Uh, 25. <laughs> uh, at that time, it wasn't too much money fighting, so I quit ahead. Uh, that's ridiculous. Good fighters clean up. Look at Joe Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Lewis owes the government over a million dollars. Now, which one of your 25 fights do you remember most clearly. Oh, I remember fighting K.O. Kelly from New Orleans. And we fought four rounds, that was. In the third round, I knocked Kelly's trunks off mid-range. <laughs> was it raining then? <laughs> you knocked his trunks off, huh? I've heard of fighting with bare knuckles, but uh, this is even more unusual. <laughs> What happened? Did you continue the fight? <laughs> well, it was stopped momentarily. The referee had to dress him over again. And did he, did he do this in the ring? Uh, in mid-ring. Oh. Well, Eunice, are you interested in anything besides uh, keeping house for uh, Bob? Right now, I'm a tennis clerk at Fauché Junior High School here in Los Angeles. You're a tennis clerk? Mm -hmm. You play tennis? No, I'm an attendance clerk. Oh. How long have you been married? Well, we've been married two years, last February 2nd. That's the first fight you ever lost, isn't it, Bob? <laughs> How's it working out? Do you get along okay? Oh, yes. <laughs> I think we do. Um, for 18 months, we didn't even have an argument. You never quarreled? Why'd you get married? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> you must have some disagreements. Now tell me, who handles the money? Bob does. I, I bring my paycheck home and I give it to him. <laughs> Is he home waiting for it? I mean... <laughs> Well, he gets thinking... home ahead of you, though, huh? <laughs> well, I sort of brought up old-fashionedly. I mean, um, I think men should, if they're able to, should handle the money. And, I mean, Bob looks after our finances, and he's able to do it. He went to USC for business administration. Not only that, he hits very hard, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, I haven't experienced that yet. No, but a man that can knock another man's trunks off is no good to <laughs> fool around with. What sort of work do you do, uh, Bob? I work for the federal government, don't you? Hmm. How old are you, Bob? 49. <laughs> really? My gosh, I thought you were about 28. You say to me, you're a fine-looking man for 49. What do you do that keeps you looking so young? Is, do you have some secret that you could uh, tell us about? Well, my secret, Groucho, is that most people use hot water or warm luke water to wash their face in. I use cold water every morning, washing my face up with massaging. Make the blood run upward. You wash your face up instead of down, huh? Up instead of down. <laughs> look at me. I look around 120, and I've been washed up for years. <laughs> I'm going to have to try that, Bob. What did, you, what did you say it does when you wash up? It makes the blood run upward. Well, there's no point in me trying that. <laughs> I could never get my blood to rise. My blood is so tired, it goes to bed three hours before I do. <laughs> well, you're a lovely couple, and I'd like to go on talking to you, but now get ready to play your bet your life. All right, you selected uh, colorful expressions. All of these common expressions involve a color. I'll give you the meaning. You give me the expression. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. What is the expression using a color that means ordinances against certain types of entertainment held on Sundays? What kind of laws are those? Those, Mr. Marks, are the blue laws. They, yes, they sure are. They're the blue laws. You have one right, three more right, and you'll have $1,000. What is the expression using a color that means to extinguish all lights during an air raid? That's blackout, Mr. Blackout Marks. Blackout is right. You're halfway to $1,000 now. What is the slang expression using a color that means a poor quality of whiskey? Is that red eye? Yes, it sure is. It's red eye. <laughs> One more right, you'll have your thousand dollars. What is the expression using a color that means a mood of serious or deep thought? That could be a brown study. You don't have to go any further. You won a thousand dollars. Four in a row, in a row. You got it. Thank you very much. That shows you what the pugilist, the life of a pugilist, will do for a man. Huh? Of course, the fact that you're in high school doesn't hurt either. Now you won a thousand dollars. You can keep it and quit, or you can come back at the end of the show and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at ten thousand. So go over there and sit down and think it over. And no matter what you decide to do, thanks for being on the show. Now here's Groucho with some words about why the big switch is on to DeSoto. This year's DeSoto was way ahead of our competitors. And yet DeSoto prices start right above the lowest. It's a big car with big car comfort and big car beauty that our competitors will be imitating two or three years from now. It's low. Lower than any of our competitors, but it's got as much or more room inside as any of the cars that are much taller. And plenty of road clearance, too. It's really got power and terrific performance. And that new torsion air ride is so smooth, you'll find it hard to believe. Now, I'm not telling you to run right out and buy a DeSoto on my recommendation, but I believe you'll be a wiser automobile buyer if you'll drive this car. See what it has to offer, then price it. And I think you'll be surprised, because this year DeSoto prices start just above the lowest. That's right, Groucho. You can buy a four-door sedan for as little as $2,732.25. That's factory retail price. State and local taxes, transportation, and delivery are extra. 
prices may vary according to individual dealer policy. Only twenty-seven thirty-two twenty-five for the most exciting car in the world today. Now, before we go on, Groucho, I have something to give you. This is a big gold potato chip from the... Well, uh... sorry, George. I just had dinner. Huh? Where did you get that? Well, you don't understand, I don't think. This... No, I certainly don't. <laughs> I'm sure you don't. This is from the National Institute of... Uh... National Institute. Uh, that's where they want to send me for a long time. <laughs> I've been fighting it tooth and nail. You're not listening to me, are you? No, I never, never have. Have I? <laughs> this is... I, I expect you to do the same, George. What? Don't listen to me either. Oh. <laughs> I want to tell you that this is from the uh, National Potato Chip Institute. Oh, how nice. And it's, um, it's actually an award that they give uh, every year to the child of some successful person. And this year, the honor goes to your daughter, Melinda. It's a chip off the old block award, by the oh, way. The, uh, that's the, what they call yeah, it? Yeah, the, the chip off the old block. Pretty, pretty clever. You know, by an odd coincidence, uh, my daughter, Melinda, is standing in the wings. Melinda, trot out here, will you? Turn around. Turn around. Now, Melinda, do you remember last year when you were Queen of the May? Well, this year, you're a solid gold potato chip. <laughs> you know, if you're going to be a chip off the old blockhead and emulate your father, you, you've got to work hard, Melinda. Show business isn't all beer and potato chips. You have to improve your singing and your dancing and, and even diction. I'll show you what I mean. Now, now, say this after me. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plains. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Again. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. I think she's got it. I think she's got it. Again. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. By George, she's got it. By George, she's got it. Now, once again, where does it rain? On the plain, on the plain. And where is that soggy plain? In Spain, in Spain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Now in Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, Hurricanes hardly happen. How kind of you to let me come. Now once again, where does it rain? On the plain, on the plain. And where is that blasted plain? be great when she gets married. <laughs> and I once again can use my own telephone. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to see my fair lady because uh, it's very difficult to get tickets. But you could buy the record anyhow. But it's one of the great musicals of all time. And if you have a chance to see it, forget everything else. George, who's next for DeSoto? Miss Cheryl Bullion and Lieutenant Robert O'Reilly are uh, waiting to talk to you, Groucho. So, folks, you've been pleased and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you each get an extra 50 smackers. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Now, let's see. Cheryl Bullion and Lieutenant Robert O'Reilly. Is this true, Lieutenant? Your last name is Bullion? No, O'Reilly. Oh, really? Huh? Well, that's enough of that joke. I just wanted to see if we could work it in. Huh? Now I'm going to have a problem working it out. Huh? And you are Cheryl Bullion. Is that right? Yes, that's right. You're not right. O'Reilly, are you? No. No, you're uh, terrible. Well, you're a fine broth of a lass. 
How old are you, Cheryl? I'm 18. 18. And how often have you been in the soup? No, no, that's it. <laughs> 18. Are you at the age when you're interested in that Satan, Tennessee singer uh, whose initials are uh, E.P.? No, I think I'm a little too old for Elvis Presley. Presley? I wasn't thinking of Presley. I was thinking of that other fellow from Tennessee, that uh, Estes P. Forva. Huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Cherry? I live in Pomona. Pomona? I, I go to Pomona every year for the county fair. Last year, I won third prize for my upside-down cake. <laughs> well, Cheryl, don't go away. I'll get back to you sooner than you think. <laughs> now, uh, how long have you been in the Army, Bob? No, I've been in the Navy, Groucho, and it's about five months. No. Oh. Well, what ship are you stationed on? Well, I'm not actually on a ship, Groucho. I'm stationed at the San Diego Naval Training Center. Well, if you're not on a ship, how do you know you're not in the Army? <laughs> I look at my uniform every day when I get up. <laughs> well, if you want to go to sea, the thing for you to do is to go to an optometrist. <laughs> now, you figure that out tomorrow morning when you're looking at your uniform. Well, what do you do down there at the naval base? Well, I'm a doctor, Groucho. A dock in the Navy, that's a very important job, isn't it? If it weren't for those Navy docks, they wouldn't have any place to tie up their battleships. <laughs> well, uh, are you a dry dock, or do you hit the old red eye? <laughs> no, I'm a doctor, Groucho. Just a plain doctor, huh? I'm actually the bone and joint specialist down there at our oh. base. Well, there's a lot of joints around that Navy yard. <laughs> Well, are you planning to make a career of the Navy? Uh, no, I'm not, Groucho. You're just practicing on these crapshooters down there, is that <laughs> it? When I finish my uh, service in the Navy, I plan to take hospital, more hospital training back in the Bay Area. In the Bay Area? You mean you're going to do stomach work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Groucho. You know. Well, has this always been your ambition, to be a doctor? Was that your ambition as a child? Yes, yes, it was my ambition. It was ambition. mine, too. You know, I wanted to be a doctor. Is that right? Yeah. The only closest I got to it was in a picture called The Day at the Races. I played Dr. Hackenbush. <laughs> That's true. I That's believe it. Close I ever got to it. Well, it's about the only truthful thing I've said tonight. <laughs> now, Cheryl, do you, you say you're from Pomona? Yes. What is it like down there? For example, what do you do for excitement when things get dull? I mean, do you, do you hop in your car and drive over to Azusa? Oh, no, not Azusa. Oh. Well, where uh, do you go things, to? Well, things haven't been too dull for me around there lately. I was chosen queen of the L.A. County Fair, and that's been keeping me busy until just lately. You were uh, voted uh, the queen of the county fair? Yes. Oh, really? Eh? Yeah. No, O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> You Bet Your Life continued on radio until June 10th, 1960.